So this is Hero League, and you picked Tassadar in this situation. Okay, so Templar's Will can only really get value when you're up against a, a team that allows you to sit there auto-attacking. And against this team, that is definitely not the case. Like, you're up against a team that you actually want to not be in range of very often, because Garrosh, Garrosh will really punish you for trying to get Templar's Will value. Like, a lot of times, one of the only reasons I would ever go Templar's Will on Tassadar was to win specific solo lane matchups like Dehaka or Sonya. <clears throat> if you have Templar's Will in those matchups, and you're godlike about dodging Spear, you can actually dominate those matchups, as I've done in the past. I've won amateur tournaments doing that. Well, I've gotten really far. I've never won an amateur tournament. Um, but I've gotten really far in amateur tournaments just going like Templar's Will Tess and the Solo Lane versus Sonya stuff like that. Back when it was better. But the thing is, also, since the days where Tess with Templar's Will was meta, his health has been nerfed and his damage has been nerfed as well. It went down. They nerfed both his health and damage. And now I'm going to pull up some stats right here. And I want you to take a look at this, okay? Um... Tassadar, let's go ahead and sort by health right here. Alright, so here we've got Abathur, basically not a hero. Murky, same deal, Eric, Balog, Pilot, Diva. The first legit in-combat hero we get for lowest health in the game is Li Ming. Boom, 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 Tassadar. You have 50 more health than Li Ming. Like, to put it in perspective, at level 10, I think you have 10 more health than Tracer. Like, and the thing is, Tracer is a hero that with three blinks and a recall that breaks debuffs still needs a lot of sustained healing in order to function properly whereas you don't have that in fact you actually need to stand still to attack you're the exact opposite of tracer who can move while attacking and has so much safety you have to stand still while attacking and you have one of the squishiest health pools in the entire game and very low mobility outside of a 30 second cooldown that isn't nearly as effective as recall so, <clears throat> and enabling you to make certain plays. So overall, you can't bet on auto attack value as Tassadar unless the team you're against is really bad or has a really bad team comp. And this game, I would definitely say, is not a Templar's Will game. Um, let's take a look here. Well, let's move on. <clears throat> this is before Gul'dan Drain Puff. I mean, even with that, this is 100% a science fusion game. Okay. Oh, I gotta invert drag scroll. There we go. Again, I was gonna say you want to W the wave in order to get value on Psy Infusion, but you didn't even take it. But yeah, this is something a lot of players get debated into doing at the start. When they do have Psy Infusion is they W on, on heroes. When you want to W the wave pretty much every time you stats. Let's, let's lower that sound a little bit more. Good shield, really good shield, I gotta say. And then really, you just want to get rotational value as Tassadar in this map in particular. You just want to clear those waves, go to the other wave, clear that wave. If you're going Templar's Will, you're gonna want to stack it, but the thing is, the easiest people to stack Templar's Will on are tanks, and they only went one tank who's really threatening, so I'm really gonna be interested to see how you get value out of this talent. Because you can't go for these gems, because he's zoning you off. Four bottom, that's kind of interesting. <clears throat> so now your team should jump. Oh, they're going for like a Zul thing. But that shouldn't work because it's so easy to control this rotation. Okay. I think you're at zero stacks right now. Two stacks, yeah. So you can get a little bit on this Garrosh right here, but again, it's just not serving you as much as the Cyan Fusion would. Right now, you're doing what you can. This is definitely the correct play, minus you should be dodging these Gul'dan Qs. Like, right now, at all times, just think, what can hurt me? And right now, it's these cool Dan cues. So you need to be backing up off of those, because you should be full health right here. But you cost yourself a little bit of unnecessary damage. Okay, so there's one thing that I think you could have done better here that I see a lot of Tassadars not doing properly. So let's go ahead and watch this again. So Tassadar, as we all know, slows by 20% when he's auto-attacking. So, and he has really long auto-attack range. That means that you want to time it so that you're moving while the enemy team is stunned because you have to stand still while attacking. You want to move while the enemy team is stunned or rooted and then attack when they're not stunned. So let me see, right here, while this guy is stunned, you just stop and stand still and you're actually wasting about half a second of slow value. Whereas you could be like right here when this slow finishes or when the stun finishes. And if you were right here hitting him this whole time, 
or even moving up as he casts his throw and be right here, then you could slow him all the way into this. And I'm pretty sure you guys have this skill. Or at least more damage. You get more slow value is what I'm saying. But sadly, your guy just kind of melts because the Nubarak just kind of stands there. And the Cassia walks straight into it, so... What I said is relevant in a more conceptual sense, not in particular that instance, but just in general. You want to time it so you're moving while the enemy team is hard CC'd, and you're slowing them while they're not hard CC'd. So this is really good, okay? This is one thing that I think a lot of players really struggle with that I think you're doing beautifully. So you recognize that you're not in any danger, even though you're very far up. Because your teammates are very low, and they're going to focus your teammates here. So you know that even though you're right here with really low health next to the enemy team, they're not even looking at you. They're looking at this guy. So you're free to get value, and that's really good recognition of the situation. Oh, really questionable engage by this Anubarak. Looks like he's going to die for it. Good shield. You're doing what you can, but at this point, you just need to bail. Hit that tap if you can. Yep. You got another shield for him? Beautifully played, I gotta say. You hit the shield on him the first time, tapped, hit another shield on him. I, I gotta applaud this guy for going to the left so that you were able to shield him again rather than up here. And again, I can't help but feel like you're gonna debate yourself into taking extra damage with Templar's will. Okay. Like, I'm just not seeing the value. This is <clears> all. <throat> Good shield again. I gotta say, the shields have been really on point this game. Um, I'm really curious to see what you go for at level 4. My personal prediction is armor. I think that armor is going to be the one that really changes the pace of this game. But there's definite value to movement speed, because somebody that's getting chased down with root, the movement speed helps them get a little further along, and it also helps people escape from Garrosh. Overall, I don't think it's lifesteal, though. Yeah, swap with me. If you had Cyan Fusion, it would also be a lot easier to compete with this double soap right here. So let's see... This Zul is just letting you stack on him. That's kind of a dream situation right there. You got a free 7 seconds. I gotta say, you're a pretty good hero for playing into this. Um, but your four-man loses to their four-man super hard because that team just has an insane amount of poke and you can never step up to them because of Garrosh. So I really don't like how the giraffe turned out in this situation. Like, I don't understand why you have a Cassia and why you have an Anubarak. Like, your team is very, let's sit back and poke, and then you have Anubarak who just wants to dive and chain CC one target. Like... So I think the Anubarak pick and the Cassia picks are really big outliers here. <clears throat> I see what Lifesteal again, I, I just, uh, the only person that gets any real value out of Lifesteal on your team is Hanzo, and even then, I don't think that justifies taking Lifesteal over armor or movement speed in this game, probably armor. The only time where I really recommend Lifesteal is if you have someone that gets insane value out of it, like a Tracer and maybe a Vala. Even then on Vala, it's a hard maybe. Whereas Tracer is the only character I'd say 100% you go Kala's and Tracer for lifesteal. Because Tracer needs that lifesteal to function, and shouldn't be getting hit enough to really get value out of the armor, and the movement speed is unnecessary because she's already really high mobility. So here, you should just be shredding this with your high auto attack damage. Yep, you hit the W so that it hits this. I think you could have done it behind and gotten more value. That's alright. You shouldn't be tanking these. Okay. Shield the fort. Let's see. You're just sitting on your on your shield right here, and I don't understand why. Like, this can hit buildings, and it actually gives you quite a bit of value in this kind of situation. I, I can't help but notice that you don't shield the fort a single time here. Because you had enough time to do probably three shields there. Um, and I think you could have saved the fort. See, just clearing away top, this is fine. I legit didn't know you could shield forts until recently. Yeah, you can shield, like, anything. Um, except, like, objective monsters. Like, uh, Braxis minions, for instance. Like the Zerg wave. Oh, this was a 
beautiful sneaky turnip, dude. I gotta say, I love this. Like, I was watching, and the, you can, you like, use your map awareness to see where this enemy team is. Let's go back and take another look at that. Alright, like, you know that if you don't get a turn in right now, you might not get one again in this game because they might just snowball on you. And you take a look to see that they're all mid, they're all distracted. You don't get your baited trying to go back in on the Anubrak who has his escape. You just have discipline here and map awareness, and it's beautiful and I love it. Here you can E this to get out of it. You just get a little bit of Templar's will value first, that's perfectly fine. You can get some more right here on this duel, but I should be you should be watching your team while you do it. I gotta say, this part being played to perfection right now. Really good job. Ooh, okay, right here? I think that you really unnecessarily gave up these gems. Like, watch, you're zoning out this Zool, no problem. Like, right here, you're just getting this Zool super low. He's taking a, just so much damage from your laser, and he's like, ah, I gotta get out of here. And this guy is 100% ready to leave. You should just be standing right here hitting these minions, saying, no, I'm not gonna let you back on these gems. But he sees you back off, and he runs back in, and he, sh he gets like five gems out of this. He misses one, but like... This is a massive misplay to give him, like, four gems right there. On the bright side, he wastes his bolt. Okay, so one situation. I think this is something a lot of players should do that they don't. You just saw him drop his ult for, like, no reason, and you're in a very low-pressure situation. You should just take a moment, look at the in-game clock, and say, okay, this is a 90-second cooldown. He dropped that at about 6.10. Just go ahead and drop in the, tat, uh, in the, in the chat, like, Zool Mages. 740 because it's a minute and 30 seconds like if you're in a very low pressure situation this is immensely helpful especially with certain big cooldowns like uh, warlord's challenge that's not a very long cooldown but it's a very important one or mosh pit which is both of those when you're in these low pressure situations call out ultimate timers it'll be a huge help to your team and it helps you shape your aggression going into future fights if you know, oh hey, we have like 8 seconds until this guy gets his ult, let's engage right now before he gets it and kill him before he can get it off. That kind of thing. So let's see, just clearing away at top lane, I like this. I think that if you are going to hearth, this is too late. I think you either do it earlier or don't do it at all. Because you need to be here getting value while these web weavers are going. You don't want to be off the map, like, specifically while the web weavers are going. Because you guys get next to nothing out of this push. I'm not really sure what your teammates were doing, but I saw that you didn't really get the value out of top lane that you could have by being away at the exact moment you needed to be there. <clears throat> okay, here you gotta join your team. Like, you can see them all top going in too far, and you just saw two DPS walk right in front of you to go top lane. Like, you've got to run straight to your team here. It's not worth three gems for the idea of your team dying. Let's see. It's a good shield, but it's not going to be enough. Your team overextended, but you should have joined them faster. I don't think it would have made a difference, but it's still just on principle you should have been there earlier. And honestly, I think you can stop your team from feeding to a limited extent by just retreat pinging them. Like, if you had warned them about these two DPS coming and, like, pinged as soon as you saw them coming, maybe your team would have backed out. It's just important to communicate that information. I don't know if you did ping because of the replay system, but that is something you should have done there if you did And you're going, like, full into auto attack value build, which is also worse at defending the base and getting offense value because the, the range is really good. It means you can interrupt turn in whenever you want. You're really good at defending from a very safe distance. You're good at pushing from a safe distance. Like, Tassadar is so squishy and you're going a build that basically is acting as if you're like a full tank. Oh, that was a beautiful body block by your Anubarak right there to keep the Garrosh off. Of I gotta say, good wall. You gotta say, you're doing a really good job of getting value on this Garrosh, recognizing again that he's looking to hit your teammates, so you're in a very low low pressure situation to put as much damage into him as you want. Here, let's see, this is a perfect opportunity to drop the wall right here. If you don't drop, perfect! I love that you saw that, absolutely. Beautifully done. And let's take another look here. We should have another one on this Lily right here. Okay, your teammates got it anyway. 
So, yeah, we still went for it. I love it. Beautifully done. Your team has a turn in. I, I honestly think you guys have the boss right here. You all five are up. You all have fairly high amounts of health. If you shield this Regar, he's going to lifesteal back up off of the boss. Um, this, this seems like a free boss to me. I'm not really sure why you're turning in here. Like, death timers are too long. I, you should be spam pinging this team to come up here. And then also the best part is you could have done this and then immediately turned in and you'd have boss and web weavers at the same time. All three forts are going down and you're probably getting keep you're probably getting wall right here. And then you're up two levels. So I think that was just a bit of a, of a macro blind spot, but I'm sure you'll still do okay. So right now, this team should be hard engaging on you. I just want to see where they are. No, they just came up. Okay. Alright, so it's okay for the Hanzo to be away. I wasn't exactly sure when they'd respawn, but if they were closer, you guys were dead. But because they're still just respawning, you guys are okay. Alright, let's take this from back from your own perspective again. Just keep getting that damage out. Good job. Shielding it off. I would wall this Garrosh every single time. Beautiful! I love it. I absolutely love it. I just realized that I had NQ showing at the top of the screen. Let's go ahead and fix that. Come on. Work with me, OBS. There we go. Sorry about that, guys. All right. So now, you guys just give this up way too easily. Like, So, think about it this way. Let's go ahead and watch this again. You only need to retreat as far as you are safe. If you retreat any further past the point of safety, you're just giving up your potential to play aggressively. And what I mean by that is they hear... You go, you push, you get up a little bit of damage, then you zone off the garage. Right here. You guys are safe. You guys are safe right here. If they engage on you, like if they run at you any further than this, you can just back up and they won't get to you in time. But it looks like you guys give them a bunch of free damage. Like you guys are still running away. And I'm like, what do you guys see over here? I don't think anybody needs to tap. You all have enough mana, and your webweaver is dying. This webweaver did not have to take any damage right here. And the thing is, your other two waves are pushed back, so this is effectively the only webweaver in play right now. So I I just think that that was really unnecessary, and you guys gave it up for free. Let's see. Okay, I'm looking for the wall play. No, you guys got it. Pure skill, baby. Beast. This is this is hey. what number one GM <clears throat> looks like, baby. Cantus Jr., thank you for the follow, man. I appreciate it. Let's see. So I'm looking for the wall play on this on this cooldown every single time right here. Like first the first thing I would do is stand right here, just barely off of the mine. Because this mine can mess up all your plans if this junk rat's paying attention. So first thing I would do is step off the mine. And then now from this position to the left, you can read, okay, does Gul'dan want to go up? I can wall him from this position. Does he want to go right? I can wall him from this position. Um, I'm so bad at seeing mine. Yeah. Me too. Dude. So anyway. So yeah, right here, I think you had a guaranteed wall play on this Gul'dan that you just didn't go for because you stood on the mine. I gotta say, this self-peel wall, absolutely beautiful. It's time to hearth at this point. Um, you managed to salvage that well, but seeing the mine would have made a difference there. I don't think you should be in. Your Regar's low on mana. You don't want to bankrupt his mana anymore by staying in. You want to let him heal everybody else. Oh, no, no, your Templars will task. What am I saying? I'm so used to Cyan Fusion. Templars will task actually has a lot of self-heal. Disregard everything I just said. You're perfectly fine. Completely forgot. It's been so long since I played this build. Okay. That's already dead. You guys, like, if you go this, this is gonna die anyway if you just sneeze on it later. But if you go up here, this isn't gonna just die if you sneeze on it later. So I gotta say, beautiful call to go for mid towers instead of top four here. Really well executed. Good shields. Wall this Garrosh off. <clears throat> You're lucky the Garrosh missed because he just got a little too greedy for it, but I think that's a wall play. Your Hanzo is way too deep. I really love these retreat pings. It's not from you, but he should be getting pinged off. You guys are doing a great job. At this point, I would just try to keep the waves pushed out because waves are vision. If you keep these waves pushed out, the enemy team can't see what's going on. Um, they, they don't have the minions out there to be scouting the waves for them, and you do. You can see when they're trying to creep up. You can dismount them automatically with minions. Like, keeping the minions pushed up when you need to know where the enemy team is is actually incredibly valuable. It looks like they're on bruisers right now. Yep, that's exactly where they are. 
So then we know they just took bruisers. Our vision's a little too far up right now, but that's a good problem to have. So we just saw three of them right there, and they were going up. And this is, I really hope you are watching this. It's very unlikely they were going down here, so it's good for your team to cycle over. Um, I think doing bruisers is fine, because you can defend against this with 16 no problem, whereas if you fight right now before 16, that's, uh, that's a potential to throw. Let's see. Gotta say, your Hanzo's doing a good job of vision control. You have mental acuity. You also, you also should be able to provide a ton of vision right here. If you D right here, you can see both turn ends when you have mental acuity maxed out because of the increased area um, when you complete the quest, which you have done. Yeah, so let me take a look at that again. I think you could have scouted this for your team. Yeah, right here... You could have definitely popped vision for your team. I don't think you would have found them. No, you, you had enough time to get all the way right here and pop vision here. So if you popped vision right here, you had more than enough time to maybe, not more than enough time, but you maybe could have W'd this. Either way, generally when you have mental acuity, you want to play to cover everything, and you're getting way closer than the range necessitates when you already have a Hanzo up here to interrupt anyway. So I think playing in the middle here for the vision on both is the play. <clears throat> Again, it's not really the end of the world if they get this turn in, because you'll be defending up 16 with a decent defense comp. I do think you should be hitting that Garrosh here, though. Just to get some poke on him and to get the mana. Unless you just spam your abilities more often. They don't really get anything out of this. That's my prediction. I, I honestly think there's a big chance they don't even get this fort. You guys are mid lane. This, this web weaver is pushed way back. This is pushed all the way back. This is up right here. And web weavers lose health as they go. I don't think they're going to get anything out of this objective. So you guys are perfectly fine. You're getting auto attack value. You're backing up as Garrosh backs up. I would split Garrosh right there between his team. Like, Garrosh was going a little too, bit too far ahead of his team. If you wall him, he's separated from his team and you can get a bunch of auto attack value. Um, okay, that's the same. That's the right idea. It's just a little late, I think. Good shield on the Cassia. I don't think you're gonna be able to save her though. Yeah. Team overextended just a little bit. And I can't help but feel like the wall was a little late and the Cassia overextended. Again, they're not gonna get anything. Oh, that is super close to the enemy team. Oh, that was dangerously close. Beautiful target focus on the Gul'dan, focusing, or forcing out his Horrify. Shield didn't come up in time for a new break. that's okay. Again, walking dangerously close to this enemy team. I... You got in melee range like three different times there, and I'm curious to see how much health you had before all that. Okay, so right here, you are full health, okay? You are full health, and there's no reason for that to change at any point in this team fight. So right here, you back up, back up. As soon as you're behind your wall, you can turn and get auto attack value. Perfect. Okay, here. Now this is where it's it's bad. Like, you can still hit them from right here. This is too close, so then Gul'dan gets a little bit of free damage on you. You shield yourself for no reason. Like, there's no way you die in that situation. Even if he lands all those corruptions on you, as long as you just walk straight backwards, they can't kill you there. So you don't have shield for your Anubarak right here, which would have slowed down their kill on him. Like, I think this Anubarak actually could have gotten away if you uh, had shielded him instead of yourself here. And again, you walk to the right here into melee range for some reason, even though you were down here and could have just gone left. So that makes you tank this um, Garrosh Q and that's uh, what's called Scythe from Zul. It also means you tank all that damage, whatever that was right there, and it forces out your E and you need that corruption. That was just a really puzzling decision to curl right towards the team instead of just curling left and going around the healing fountain to safety. Let's see. Again, ooh, you need auto attack value here just to, just to lifesteal. You could have healed yourself to full right there. Oh, you're going for the wall play. I get it. No, 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 I'm dumb, but... You don't have your tank with you, and I don't think you can actually get this play. Like, at this point, you're just looking for a 4v5. You don't have a team that's really exceptional at just bursting somebody down, but... Did Garrosh just throw her into a kill? Hold on, let's take a look at that again. This should never have worked. Like, don't get me wrong, this play should never have worked out for you. 
Let's see. So you guys all hop on Lili. Oh yeah, you're on these guys. And then he... He should have thrown this guy down here every single time. He should have made the throw that puts him right in the middle of his team instead of away from his team. And, and he put him onto the one person that can't be next to Cassie right now. There's no universe in which that should have worked. Beautiful shield. Good auto attack value. Ooh, you could have tank you could have dodged that scythe a little bit. You were just barely in it. I think you're looking at the garage right here, and it's a forgivable mistake, but it's one you shouldn't have made. Let's see, another wall play should be coming up. I think you just let this Zul walk away for no reason right here. Let's take a look at this. Like, you have wall coming up in one second, and you just stand and auto-attack him instead of chasing after him. Let's see. Right here. This is, like, he's getting pretty close to the edge. That's fair. Is a concern about saving Cassia. I do think Cassia was fine, but I can definitely see how you would go for that play. This is again another 100% free boss, and your team should be going for it right now. And they got, and again, this is another situation where you should be calling out mages' cooldowns. That came out at about 43, 44. I wasn't sure because I was playing it faster. But if it came out at 44, that's uh, an extra minute and a half. We're looking at 15, 13, I think. So, like, that should have been a call out that came out right there. Just shred this down. I like that you're anchoring. One person should always anchor in this push. Usually the tank, but because the tank wasn't doing it, you step up to hold it for him. I like this. You're effectively anchoring by clearing this wave, so you're still getting value. I really like this. I really like that you didn't just AFK sit on the boss, but you actually made sure that your team was okay here, and that they didn't try anything crazy with like a horrify play. Okay, just pushing this in, doing a great job. Just get value on this turret. And avoid the mine. Okay, shield this rip tire damage. Beautiful. Okay, W the wave right here. W is a little too far forward to get the avoiding wave. That's okay. Again, we're standing on mine. This is a wall play on Garrosh every single time. Yeah, you let this garage go. Like, I think you're getting a little too enamored with the idea of AA value when you should be getting walls above everything. And then you can worry, like, walls allow you to set yourself up in really aggro position so that you get auto attack value after the wall goes down because you're in a very aggro position. But um, just standing there getting auto attack values is, has a few times through this game prevented you from going for the really aggressive wall that would have secured a kill. Again, just like with the other situation with the boss, you always want somebody anchoring. We've got a new Brack who looks like he was just late on the rotation, but he effectively served that role. Beautiful wall right there. You knew he was going for it. Exactly what you should have done. I would just... Yeah. Like, you can't really go out and clear these waves. They're way too out. You don't want to stand out there. Honestly, I would have hearth right here. Like, you don't even really need to tap at all. You have plenty of time to hearth. But it makes a very small difference here. If they want to go hard on top lane, honestly, I think I think y'all should have focused top because it has open keep and it already has a bunch of damage on it, so that's the lane you want to go for. Because now that's not happening. I think that was just given up for no reason. Let's see. I don't even really think you needed to reset at all, to be honest. But I think if you were, it had to be earlier, and you guys had to go to top lane earlier. This is a wall play on this cooldown every single time. I think you're looking at the wrong place right here. This cooldown steps straight up to you. And again, okay, so right here, teams are really, like, really, really prone to having their tank barely walk through this gate, and that is your dream scenario. When I played TAS every day, I would be staring at this gate right here, and as soon as a tank walked through it, I would drop a wall right here. Right behind their gate, and they would just be stuck right here. <clears throat> and I got so many game-winning plays like that. Let's see. You're standing insanely far back, like, you should be looking for wall plays right now. You're in zero danger. You could be right here, and you would be in as much danger as you are right here. You're just too far away, and you're limiting your ability to go for aggro kills. Like, right here, 
if you wall this Garrosh right here, your team can instantly go in and combo him, and at the very least get him low, but you're just too far away to do anything. I mean, it wasn't it Lili on the side? Like, Lili's not going to do anything from the side. Either way, let's go ahead and look at that again, because I'm actually curious about the status of your vision, because if you are concerned about a Lili flank... Okay, your vision's down. You see two of them right now. Honestly, the Horrify play out of the side bush is the only thing that can scare me about this. You see Junkrat right here? It's time to step up. We just saw one person right there. You only saw their feet. Yeah, boom. It, it's time to step up at this point. Yeah, so you 100% could have gone for that junk or that Garrosh play. I think that's just an awareness issue, anything. If anything, if that's what was stopping you from playing more aggro there. Again, you're just standing too far away to make any plays. Like, I think right here was a perfectly safe place to be, right on the web weaver. Right here, you're good. You're just out of danger. You should wall this guy. It's alright. You need to run at this point. You're not going to get any more auto attack value. I don't know why your new Brack went in there, but I do think he played way too safe on that. Like, if you want to play like that, where you just stand in the back and gas spells, like you just go the W build. Let's see, they're on this camp right here. Oh, this is incredibly ballsy. He should never have been on this solo. And I think... Oh my god, hold on, I gotta watch that at normal speed. I just sped through that right there. Alright, let's take another look at this. Honestly, you're treating this as if you're stuck in here with him, but that's not the case. He's stuck in here with you. This is wall, like, you wall him in. You don't wall him off of you. You wall him in on this play every single time. You see where they have two people up here? You see where this guy is? He's in, like, he's going to die if you just wall him in right here. And I think you let him go. Especially because if you wall him in, like, say you do a wall right here, he's guaranteed to stand in your W. Two more damage ticks and one W tick and this guy's dead. I'm pretty sure you let this guy go for free. Very nearly died a Gul'dan for it. This is a good time to hearth her back. Or hearth her tap, sorry. I think tap was the play there just because your team was playing really aggro and you wanted to be up further, or up uh, faster. Because now, like, if you tapped, you would have already been with your team, whereas because you hearth, you're way back here. Yeah, it's a good play by your team to go for this. You, please tell me what. Yes, you did go Force Barrier. Okay. I like the percentage damage into Garrosh. I hope that in teamfights, you're holding your D until Garrosh is a little lower, if possible. I haven't really been watching out for that, just so you can burn through his armor. What is this engage? You're in such an awkward position, and then Junkrat just saves him. Okay, here, boom, wall, right here. Again, like, we're not seeing the wall come out at all. This this is entirely in your range after you get the bo sorry, after you get the bonus range at 20. This is entirely within your range. You should be stopping their team from doing anything. You should be walling these guys in right here. Like, if you're not spamming wall on cooldown at 20, you're misplaying. Because it's one of the strongest level 20s in the game. Here, like, for instance, your Cassia just went in on Gul'dan. The enemy team is looking to follow up and peel for them. Boom. You wall right here and they can't follow up. Like, you could have blocked off this team from following up on their Gul'dan, and Gul'dan dies there. Let's see. Again, here, another wall right here. Or right here. Like, you're sitting on your wall cooldown, and I'm not sure why. Again, another wall right here. Lock this garage in with you. Okay, another wall right here. Block them in. Just keep chasing. You've got another wall soon. Another wall right here. There should be a wall right here. Okay. Another one right here? No, she had the heal actually. This one's the way to go. Beautiful. And you're getting the auto attack value because your teammate's tanking? Gorgeous. I think that just overall the wall plays are generally good, but you're not really seeing like that next level of wall play that makes you a really great Tacit Art player. that aoe shield by regar oh god no side note when you go regar at um at level 20 take rewind because earth grass totem is one of the most insane 16s it's basically a root a big root 
And don't go wolf around on a map this small. That's really good on, like, Cursed Hollow or something. But, like, if you go Totem at 1, Totem at 16, Totem increases the radius of it, and then this makes it have a big root, and then you get two massive roots. You can lock down an entire team for the entirety of a team fight, pretty much, and you get two 12% max health shields. Rewind is the way to go on Rhaegar, 100% at 20. Okay. Here, you should be able to just wall this Lily off. Yeah, you guys are just gonna have to get pushed away. It doesn't matter what you do at this point. And GG. So overall, I think the positioning at times was a little questionable and that when you needed to be aggro, you were a little too passive. When you needed to run away, you were a little too forward. And overall, the walls were definitely really good, but there were just some like really top tier walls that you missed out on that I think you could have gone for. Um, I really hate the Templars, Will. I will say that. I think it's a garbage ability. Um, but I do think you did a really good job of using it right based on where the enemy team was focusing their aggression and you recognized when you weren't their focus and you used that in order to get Templar's will damage out and I think that was really well done. Level 20 wall is broken, yes. And I think if you had used it on that fight or to peel Cassia then like you would have insta-insta won even more than you did right after that.